Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 23. And in this video, we're gonna learn about the order of operations with integers. So our lesson objective is to learn how to use the order of operations when integers are involved. So we've already seen the order of operations before, right back when we were working with whole numbers. But I wanna do a lesson where we specifically deal with integers because those problems are a little bit harder. So let's go over the order of operations again. The first thing you're gonna do is work inside of grouping symbols. Generally, this is gonna be parentheses or brackets. Then you're gonna perform all exponent operations. Then we want to multiply or divide, remember from left to right. Then we wanna add or subtract, and again, from left to right. So I said this a lot when we did our last lesson. The multiplication and division, remember, those are on the same step. You do them from left to right. So I know a lot of you memorize the PEMDAS the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You just have to remember that these two right here occur on the same level, we work left to right, okay? We work left to right. Same thing with add or subtract, right? We work left to right. So this is the same level, left to right. All right, let's jump in and look at some problems. So we wanna evaluate each, and again, that's just saying we wanna find the value for. And we're gonna start out with seven plus, we have this negative two squared plus negative nine plus one squared. So what's my highest priority here? I don't have any parentheses or brackets or any grouping symbols. So we go to our next highest priority, which would be to perform all exponent operations. So we have an exponent here and here. So negative two squared. Remember, we have parentheses around the base there, so both the negative and the two are squared. So negative two squared is negative two times negative two, that's four. So I'll replace this and put seven plus, this is gonna be four plus negative nine plus, and then we have one squared. Now one squared is one times one, that's one. Now we just have addition. So we can work left to right but remember, when we're adding integers, it's usually easier for us to add the numbers that have the same sign first. So let's reorder our addition to make it easy on us. We'll put seven plus four plus one. Those numbers are all positive. Then plus negative nine, that number's negative. So we'll add the positive numbers first. Seven plus four is 11. Then 11 plus one is 12. So I'll have 12 plus negative nine. So 12 plus negative nine is the same thing as 12 minus nine. And 12 minus nine is three. So the answer here is going to be three. All right, for this problem, inside of brackets we have this quantity, negative seven plus four minus two. Then we're multiplying by five. Then we're dividing by, we have this quantity, negative 10 minus a negative five. Now I'm gonna start out by looking for grouping symbols. And I have parentheses here. I have brackets here, and then I have an inner set of parentheses, an inner set of parentheses here. So I'm gonna start inside the brackets, and once I get in the brackets, I go to the innermost set of parentheses. And why is that? Again, when you go inside of your grouping symbols, you reapply the order of operations, and you start out by looking for grouping symbols again. So I find parentheses here, and so I start inside. So I have negative seven plus four minus two. All I have is addition and subtraction, so I work left to right. So negative seven plus four, the sign is gonna be negative, and then we do seven minus four, that's three, so that's a negative three. So we're gonna replace this part right here with a negative three. And then we have minus two. Okay, then times five, and we just copy the rest of this. Okay, now continuing inside of these parentheses here, now I have a negative three minus two. So negative three minus two is the same as negative three plus a negative two. Remember, if I'm subtracting away two, it's the same as adding the opposite of two, right? So that could be negative three plus a negative two. The sign would stay the same. So it would stay as a negative. And then you just do three plus two. Three plus two is five, so this ends up being negative five. So that is negative five, and then we have times five. Okay, then we're dividing by, and then in the parentheses here, we have negative 10 
minus a negative 5. Okay, I'm going to finish this off now. We have negative 5 times a 5, and that's going to give me what? Negative 25, right? Negative times positive is negative. 5 times 5 is 25. So this is negative 25 divided by, and then we can go ahead and crank this out. We have negative 10 minus a negative 5. When you subtract away a negative, you add a positive. So really, this is negative 10 plus 5, right? This would change to addition. This would change to its opposite. The opposite of negative 5 is 5. So if I have negative 10 plus 5, okay, the sign is going to be negative. And then we do 10 minus 5, and that's 5. So this would end up being negative 5. So now this problem is negative 25 divided by negative 5. Negative divided by negative is positive. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So 5 is our answer for the problem. All right, for the next one, we have 1 plus, and then we have a quantity 28 minus 1, and then it's divided by, and then we have this quantity 6 minus a negative 3. So I do have parentheses here. I have 28 minus 1, and I have parentheses around 6 minus a negative 3. So we'll just start in here. 28 minus 1 is 27, so we'd have 1 plus 27, and then divided by this 6 minus a negative 3. We can go ahead and crank that out. That's basically 6 plus 3, right? Minus a negative is plus a positive, and 6 plus 3 is 9. Okay, so now we have addition and we have division. So we want to do division before we do addition. So we would do 27 divided by 9 first. 27 divided by 9 is 3, so this would be 1 plus 3. And then we just do 1 plus 3, and that's 4. So our answer here is 4. Okay, for the next problem, we have 6 times negative 8 then minus, and then inside of brackets we have these parentheses with negative 8 times 2, then divided by 4, then minus 21, then divided by 3. So when we start this problem, we see that we have some brackets. We're always looking for grouping symbols to start. And then once we get inside, and we look at this right here, again, we reapply the order of operations. Well, I have parentheses inside of the brackets, so I want to start inside those parentheses, right? That's my highest priority. So what is negative 8 times 2? Well, negative 8 times 2 is a negative times a positive. That's a negative. And then 8 times 2 is 16. So this is negative 16. So we'll have 6 times negative 8 minus. And then inside these brackets, this will be negative 16. Then divided by 4. Then minus 21. Then divided by 3. So staying inside these brackets now, We'll have division, subtraction, and division. So we're going to do negative 16 divided by 4 first. So negative 16 divided by 4 is going to be negative 4. Negative divided by positive is negative. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we'll have 6 times negative 8 minus, and then inside the brackets, this is going to be a negative 4, and then minus 21 divided by 3. Now, staying inside the brackets, we have subtraction and we have division. So we have 21 divided by 3. That's what we're going to do first because division is the higher priority. So 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we'll have 6 times negative 8, then minus, and then inside of the brackets here, we're going to have negative 4 minus, again, 21 divided by 3 is 7. So all we have left inside the brackets now is negative 4 minus 7. And you can think of negative 4 minus 7 as negative 4 plus a negative 7. Negative plus negative is negative. 4 plus 7 is 11, so you get negative 11 there. So I'm going to have 6 times negative 8. And then minus, again, this is negative 11. So what do I have here now? I have multiplication and I have subtraction. So we want to multiply before we subtract. So 6 times negative 8, positive times negative is negative. 6 times 8 is 48, so you get negative 48. And then you'd have minus a negative 11, which you can go ahead and write as plus a positive 11. So plus 11. Remember, minus a negative is plus a positive. So now we have one final operation here. We have negative 48 plus 11. So we know the sign would be negative. And we just do 48 minus 11. 
8 minus 1 is 7, 4 minus 1 is 3. So we're going to end up with negative 37 as our answer. Okay, for the next problem, we have 3 times the absolute value of negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 7, and then we have plus 10. So what's our highest operation here? Well, we would work inside of the absolute value bars to start. These are serving as grouping symbols here. So once we get inside the absolute value bars, we want to look and see what's the highest priority. I have an exponent, I have addition, and I have multiplication. So my exponent is the highest priority. So I would do negative 1 cubed. Now, my exponent is odd, and I have parentheses around the base. So that tells me I'm going to have a negative result, right? I'd have three factors of negative 1. An odd number of negative factors gives me a negative result. So this is just going to be negative 1. So I'd have 3 times the absolute value of, again, this is negative 1, then plus 2, then times negative 7. Then over here we have plus 10. So I'm going to continue inside the absolute value operation. So I have addition and I have multiplication. So multiplication is the higher priority. So we would do 2 times negative 7 first. 2 times negative 7, positive times negative is negative. 2 times 7 is 14. So that would be a negative 14. So we're going to have 3 times the absolute value of negative 1 plus, again, this is negative 14. And then we have plus 10 over here. So now, again, continuing inside the absolute value operation, you have negative 1 plus a negative 14. So negative plus negative is negative. 1 plus 14 is 15. So this is going to be 3 times the absolute value of negative 15. And then we have plus 10. So now that we've performed all the operations inside of the absolute value bars, we can go ahead and find the absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 15 is 15. So this would be 3. Remember, we were implying multiplication here. So times 15 and then plus 10. Now I have multiplication and addition. I want to multiply before I add. So 3 times 15 is 45. And then we have plus 10. And 45 plus 10 is 55. Let's look at one final problem. So we have 2 minus, and then inside of absolute value bars, we have inside of parentheses negative 1 plus 7 times 3, then divided by this quantity 6 minus 7, then times negative 1. So to start this problem, I would work inside of the absolute value bars first, right? Those are grouping symbols. So once I get inside, I see that I have parentheses here and here. And note that these parentheses here Really, the only reason we have parentheses there is to not get confused where we have a times and then a minus 1. You usually will put parentheses around it just to separate those two operators, the multiplication symbol and the negative symbol. So let's begin by working inside of this set of parentheses. And we have negative 1 plus 7 times 3. So you have multiplication and you have addition. You want to multiply before you add. So let's do 7 times 3, that's 21. So we'll have 2 minus, and then inside the absolute value bars, you'll have some parentheses with negative 1 plus, this will be 21. And then divided by, inside parentheses, we have 6 minus 7, and then times, and then we have negative 1. Okay, continuing inside of these parentheses, negative 1 plus 21 would be 20. Right? The sign would be positive, and you do 21 minus 1, and that's 20. So we'll have 2 minus, and then inside the absolute value bars, we'll have a 20 divided by, and then this quantity here, 6 minus 7. We can go ahead and just do that. 6 minus 7 would be negative 1. So we'll write that as negative 1. So then after that, we have times a negative 1. And continuing, now inside the absolute value bars, we have division and multiplication. Remember, multiplication and division occur on the same step. We work them left to right. So because division occurs to the left of multiplication, we do it first. Okay? So we're going to do 20 divided by negative 1. Positive divided by negative is negative. 20 divided by 1 is 20. 
So this would just be negative 20. So two minus, and then inside the absolute value bars, we'll have a negative 20, and then times a negative one. And continuing, now we have multiplication, negative 20 times negative one. When you multiply by negative one, you're basically just changing the sign. So this was a negative. When I multiply by negative one, it's a positive. So I'll have two minus, and then inside of absolute value bars, positive 20. Now we'll do the absolute value of 20, and that's 20. So you'd have two minus 20. We would have two minus 20. So we'll wrap this up with two minus 20. So I can think about this using addition as two plus negative 20. The sign of the answer would be negative, right? Negative 20 has a larger absolute value. And then you just do 20 minus two, right? 20 minus two is 18. So your answer here would be negative 18.